Hey, Tactical Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Today I'm going to be doing a customer requested uh, setup video on how to set up a brand new pack of 3 by 4 inch micro mesh pads. Uh, I had a customer that bought one of my Mother of Pearl blanks. She's having a really hard time getting a full high grade polish on her Mother of Pearl blanks. So the first thing that I asked her when she said she was struggling was how high of a grit are you going to on your polishing? And she said that she was only going up to about a 600 grit. And with resins, you need to go a lot higher. So these micro mesh pads go from 1500 grit all the way up to 12,000. And then it leaves a very high grade polish. These are three by four inch micro mesh pads. There's nine of them in here. So I mentioned to her that I needed to get a new set and that I could do a full tutorial video on how to bring these out, get them fully set up and how well they work. And so come on out. We're gonna be doing a tutorial video on how to set these up and how to use them on your lathe. All right, so here's our brand new pack of micro mesh pads. Let's go ahead and get these opened up. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is they smell absolutely awful. <laughs> I don't know if it's the adhesive or if it's formaldehyde or something that they put uh, in order to preserve the color on these, but they smell wretched to start. So. Just know that they have a smell to them, but it's absolutely normal and the smell does go away and it doesn't impart onto your product at all. This right here, this is your color chart. This tells you exactly uh, what color does what. So starting off here, you've got rust is your 1500 grit. And then you go to, ooh, they're stuck together. Yeah. They go to green, 1800. Then gray is your 2400. Tan is 3200. Wine, 3600. Teal, 4000. Purple, 6000. Blue, 8000. And fuchsia is 12000. I like this kit because of the variance of colors. The first couple times I bought these, the uh, 12000 was like a gray color and it almost perfectly matched the 2400 and the tan 3200 and so it was hard to tell other than feel um, which one was which between the tan and the light gray that the 12,000 was now they make it with this fuchsia it's really easy to tell which one's which so I've got that stack in order first thing that I do is I go through and I mark uh, what grit each of those is so I've got just an extra fine tip Sharpie here and I just go through and I mark on two ends what that grit level is. This one here, this is 1500. And then I write it here as well. I flip it over, set it to the side and do the next one. And I just do that all the way through all of them. So you can see me fast forward through it here. Now you can see I've got all of those marked from 1500 all the way through 12,000. Next thing that I'm going to do, these are three inches wide by four inches long. I love this size because what I can do is I can go through, cut them all in half, and then have a two by three inch, which is a lot easier to work with because the two inches is just about the width of most of your single tube pen blanks and so it doesn't have a whole lot hanging off of the ends so you don't accidentally sand off your bushings a whole lot when you are doing your polishing process. So I'm going to go through, cut all these in half and then I'll end up with twice as many of these pads making it go from you know a $20 purchase to $10 each and that'll last me about a year in just this one stack of pads alone. So. 20 bucks for an entire year's worth of supply, that's a pretty darn good deal. So now you can see I've got two sets with numbers on both sides, which is why you number both ends of your pads 
with the numbers because now I've got two sets of exactly the same pads. I'll take one set, I'll put those in a drawer with a, in the plastic bag and save those for later where they'll be nice and protected. The other set I'll put over here on the side and have them ready for use. All stored, ready for future. So here's the set that we're going to use today. So here's my previous set. You can see how worn out it's become over the last year of use. Now this one I actually cut lengthwise. These ones I wanted to try widthwise just to see if they were any different. Um, it's kind of nice having them lengthwise. So I've got big hands so I'm able to really get in there and hold the full length of it back a little further. Not a huge deal. These ones I've got them just like this and they're going to be just fine. It'll cover more of the pen all at once. That way I don't have to go back and forth as much. So it's all user's choice. You can do it however you want, but I don't know if you can see inside there, you can see like it's kind of sparkly and flashing a little bit from all of the resin and metal and wood and everything that's just stuck in there from the last six months or so of use. Because these are the second set out of the last batch that I bought. And so they are heavily worn out. They've serviced me well, but they're starting to not get as good of a finish. I'm having to spend a lot more time with the 1500 and the 1800 and the 2400 than I usually should. And so uh, because they're leaving scra their own scratches behind, because the surface has like little embedments of metal um, from doing like aluminum blanks and other parts and things. So I'm going to go ahead and discard those and we'll get going with our new set. For demonstration purposes, what I've got is I've got a blue, green, gold uh, color tester. This is just a Sierra pen. Um, I've got the sides all chopped down, got the face trued off. So I'm just going to turn up the Sierra pen real quick and then I will go through the sanding and polishing process that I do for Alumalite blanks. All right, here we are just three minutes later and now we've got a really nice uh, turn on this. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we will get to sanding this bad boy. Next step, I'm gonna be using some of this 320 grit 3M auto paper. This is about the coarsest that I like to use on uh, a resin blank. It takes off a lot of material pretty quickly, but it takes it off uniformly with very little amount of scratches compared to using actual sanding paper. Now, if this were a hybrid, I could take sanding paper to it in order to get that wood down, but then I'll use the sanding paper all the way up to 600, and with a hybrid, I'll always do a CA finish. That's just my preference, but with a straight resin blank like this, I'm gonna use the 3M 320, and I just put it, cut it into a little patch like this, and then I wet sand it. I wet sand with resin, 100% of the time. I do not dry sand because it'll build up too much in the paper and it'll cause scratches. Now, I don't know if you can see here. Let me see if I can zoom in. You might be able to see that I've got quite a few lines going around. There you can see right around the top, right up here, you can see lines that are going across. And those are circular lines from the turning process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with the 320, just get rid of all those lines, get this all nice and level. You can kind of hear it. It sounds a little like uh, running your fingernail across one of those holographic images that changes, you know, it looks three-dimensional and changes when you change the angle. Here, listen. So I've got all these really fine ridges that are all across there. I've actually got a little bit of a divot right here that I will go through and I will level out the entire blank using 320. I put a towel underneath so that way I don't get the bed of my lathe all wet with water. Um, just protects it so I don't have to do as much rust prevention and fixing later. And then um, turn your speed down. I usually do it at about 1600 is where I'm comfortable at and it seems like the 3M at least does the best uh, 
abrading of the material off at 1600 and below. Anything faster just seems like it's going too fast for those granules and it just kind of skips over top of it and doesn't really build up. So I've got a glass of water over here to my side, so I'm just going to dip this in, get it nice and wet. And then with it still wet, just come in here and start buffing it out. Now you can see that slurry building up. That's what you want. That's the material coming off of your blank. If your sanding paper isn't creating a slurry like that with the water and the resin coming off, grab new sanding paper because it's not doing its job. Dip it in the water, get all that cleaned off. With it still wet, come back and do it again. More slurry, clean that off. Hit it again. You want to keep it wet. You don't want it to dry out. If it starts drying out, you need to go back and get more water. All right, we'll go ahead and stop it. Dry it off. Fingernail doesn't catch anywhere on it. Rotate it around. Looking pretty good. I don't feel that divot anymore that was right here. So we've got it nice and uniform all the way across the blank. Now we can move up to 600 grit. So this one here, this is hard to get a good camera angle. 300 grit or 600 grit wet dry sandpaper from 3M. I just cut it into little sections again, makes it a little easier to work with, and then we'll just 1600, spin it up. And you're just working on getting rid of all those scratch marks at that 320 left. Again, you get that slurry build up, and then you just dip it in the water, clean it off, and come back at it. And you can reuse these little patches of sanding paper. This is probably the third time I've used this piece of, of sanding paper. And if you get buildup in there that won't clean off, like right here, don't use that spot. Just go to a clean section. There we go. It's looking really uniform. A little shinier than it was the last time. And now we're ready for our micro mesh pads. So we'll clean that off, let you see it. So there's 600 grit. Not a perfect sheen, but it looks really good here. And this is where I would usually stop if I were doing a hybrid and then I would go over and do my CA finish. You can see it's it's got a nice sheen to it, but it is kind of foggy. You can see the reflection of the light isn't like a crisp line. It's kind of a, just kind of a fogged out line. So what we're going for is we want that reflective line of our light to be a nice, crisp, clean laser beam of light going across our blank. And that's where the micro mesh pads come in. So here I've got my micro mesh pads. So we're going to go ahead and go through... We'll start with 1500 and then work our way down the grits. So we dip our 15 in the water. And again, about 16, 1500 or so is where it's good to turn this at. And then just come in here and you just work your pad back and forth. Try not to get too much onto your metal bushings because that will get metal filings into your pads and make it so they don't last as long and it'll slowly 
wear down your bushings, make you have to replace them sooner. But we just, and I'm just using, I've got my two fingers on the back sides, and I'm controlling the pressure of where I want it to grind off that little bit of resin on this side, and then I'm pressing it on this side when I go to the opposite side, so this side here isn't even touching while I'm polishing this side. And then I kind of roll it, and I go to the other side, and then I get the middle. My pad's starting to dry out, so I go dip it in water, clean that resin off, come back and hit her again. Now 1500 is where I do most of the scratch removal work from the 320 and the 600. So 1500 and the 1800 will remove most of the scratches and everything after that is just kind of a, a heavy buffing compound. These actually will remove material. You can see the slurry it's building up there. That slurry is it actually removing the material and then everything after that is just kind of a, a buff job. All right, well, I think that's ready for our next grit up. What I'll do is over here on the side, you can't see it, maybe I'll show you later. I just take my pads and I've got like a, um, I've got a uh, stand, not a stand, I've got a box that's sitting there. And I'll just lean these pads against the box and then I'll lean the next one out and against it so that way the water can drip off and dry the pads out. Um, that way they are nice and fresh for you to use on the next go around. Get this pad wet, and I will hit it with 1800. You can kind of see how I, when I come in, I come in at the bottom and work my way up. That way it keeps water right here in this section right there. You can kind of see that. And that builds up that slurry, keeps it off your blank, and keeps the blank wet so you can go a little bit longer without having to change and dip in water as often. So you just come in and then just build that water up. All right, on to our next grit. Next is 2400. Again, same thing, you start at the top, build that water up into a slurry, adjust pressure over the entire blank with your fingers underneath, rotating back and forth in the middle, and then rinse and repeat. And now, 3200. Now as you get higher up in the grit, you don't need to spend as much time on each one as you would before. The 15 and the 1800, you're getting a lot, a lot more imperfections than are what are left by previous sanding papers and polishing pads. Now we're getting up and you can see there's a lot less slurry for the amount of time that I worked on this pad with because the grit is getting finer and finer and is not taking off as much at a time. Now, 3600. So 
See, and now you can hardly even see any slurry on there. Hardly anything. Just taking off less and less. So this is where the real polishing comes through. It's on these next four grits. And then you don't need to spend as much time on them. Again, you're spending less time on the higher grits. Just moving pressure all around the blank. Polishing it up really well. And that one's done, and we move on to the next one. So now 6,000. And I should mention that each of these pads, I'm dipping them in and kind of wiping them off in case there's any residue left over from the factory on the pad itself so I don't impart that onto my blank. So there's 8,000. And now 12,000. And rinse off your pads before you stand them up. That way... You don't have a whole bunch of resin caked onto your pads when you stand them up to dry out. All right. So now my favorite tool in the shop, blue shop towel. Just take a section, we just come in here, we dry off the entire blank. And now you can see that that reflection line, instead of being a foggy haze, is actually a nice, clean, crisp laser line going across the blank. It's not as diffused as it was before. Now that's not the last step. 12,000 grit is where I'll stop with the polishing pads. My last step is just to touch off and it gets rid of any micro scratches that are left on the blank. Hut Ultra Gloss Plastic Polish. This is my favorite stuff. I got it at Woodcraft, $10.99. It's not very expensive and this bottle has lasted me a couple of years now and it is fantastic. The bottle is only seven-eighths full. I've only used an eighth of it in two years in all of the pens that I've turned, all of my resin projects, and I've hardly used anything out of it. It's wonderful stuff, really simple to use. You can actually use it by hand if you want. Um, you can work on it on the lathe really easily. It's just wonderful stuff. So I just take a piece of blue shop towel, folded it into uh, fourths, so there's four layers there, just uh, makes it so the heat doesn't transfer as much onto your fingers. Just take like a, I don't know, less than a dime size for a single tube blank like this. You put a little bit on there, you rub that around, spin it by hand a little bit, and then just buff it on until you start feeling it kind of push back like you're trying to push something with a rubbery foot on it against a hardwood floor. And then all of a sudden it starts pushing back on you right there. It just started feeling like rubber. You can feel it really start to grab. And then go over here. You can see it's already starting to take material off of the alumilite. Okay. Then we go over here, turn on our lathe, amp it up to about 2,000 RPM. And then go back with the same section. And then really work it in. Try not to go onto the metal too much. Avoid it if you can, but of course you do have to get down to the ends. And now, I just felt it getting hot on the back side, so I'm gonna discard that piece, come in with a fresh piece, and then we buff it off. So we just put wax on, and now we wax off. And just keep going to a fresh section of patch until it stops coming off black. See, I've got three black sections, each getting less and less. So this last one's probably going to be the last one. And this one is finished. See, no black, we're done.
and look at that finish. See that laser line going across there? Gorgeous reflective properties off of that alumilite. It's wonderful stuff. Let me take it off here. I'll get you a better look. You can see that blank's just reflecting light off of it. Nice laser line reflection of the light going through. You can actually see my ring light off over my right shoulder reflecting it. That's how pristine of a polish that we've got on there. It's just reflective of that light. Beautiful blank. All thanks to micro mesh pads and HUD Ultra Gloss, my favorite two products for polishing Alumilite. All right, so that's how that blank turned out. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's really pretty. And it actually does have a uh, shifting color feature, which I can't seem to get on camera here. It just wants to show you the gold, but it does shift gold, green, and blue. It's really cool. Um, so this was just a tester piece. I cast up a whole bunch of tester pieces from Solar Color Dust. I just wanted to see how they look. God, it's pretty. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can polish. The main thing is getting into a higher grit realm. So we've got polishing pads. I don't know. Let's see. Let me move you a little bit, see if you can see over here. So there's my polishing pads. I've got them stacked up with space in between them so that they can drip dry out and uh, uh, the water can dry off the pads. That way uh, they're nice and fresh and clean, or at least you can go through afterward and break off any of the leftover residue off of the pads the next time you go to use them because you don't want that water to stay on there because water uh, will uh, grow mold and algae and all sorts of stuff that you do not want on them. So you let them dry out. That way they're nice and clean and fresh for you the next time. And that's how you get them to last longer. Stand them up, let them dry out is uh, my, my preferred method. There are people out there that like make little racks for them, set them on them, they dry them out, whatever you choose to do. There are other products out there. You don't have to go with the 3M paper and the polishing pads. Um, the 3M paper is nice. Um, there are lots of off brands out there and I always go with the 3M um, because I seem to get more use out of the abrasive with the 3M than I do with other off brands. I went the cheap route once, bought an off brand and every time that I used them, I had to discard them because they wouldn't last a second use. And so I just, I just stuck with the 3M and I actually just buy these at my local uh, Fred Meyer. Um, you guys, you know, you might have a Walmart or something else. Uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, they all carry these. Um, you can find them in your automotive department and you can also find them uh, in your paint sections is where um, I get these. Now you got the polishing pads and then you've also got these. This is Zona paper. This works really well. I buy these on Amazon just like I do my polishing pads. Um, if there's something that is a, a smaller area or like I, I've cut grooves or something into it and I need to get finer detail. I'll use Zona paper, um, but you can use this for just polishing your pens as well. Uh, it works really well. You can see the breakdown on there. It's got green, dark blue, white, then pink. That's the same as going like 1800 to 3000 to 8000, then on to 12,000 is kind of how that works out. But on here it goes from coarse to fine. Uh, green is 30 micron, gray 15 micron, light blue 9 micron, pink 3 micron, aqua is 2 micron, and white is 1 micron. So it's just stepping down on the particle size and you use these wet just like you do with the uh, polishing pads and they'll take material off and give you just as high of a sheen and then I'll follow it up with the Hut Ultra Gloss you see there in the background. And you can also buy the sheets alone. Um, I use the green a lot uh, more than I do the other ones. I'll start off with the green sometimes if I want to get uh, fast polish because it does seem to take stuff off a little bit quicker than a 1500 grit polishing pad I've found um, but leaves a nicer profile afterward and isn't as harsh especially if it's something that's flat um, if you need it to stay flat uh, I find that this works better than using the polishing pads because the pads will kind of round over uh, squared off surfaces and these you can keep flatter uh, better with these and like I said I use the green a lot um, I actually bought this green on Amazon, comes with a package of five, and I bought these a couple years ago, and I've only used probably two sheets out of it, and I just take them and I cut them into fourths this way, and then cut them into thirds this way, and they uh, last me multiple uses. Uh, each of those little sections will last 
uh, through quite a few pens before I have to grab a new section. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that helps uh, you guys out. You know, if you're wanting to know how to get a good high sheen out of some of the Alumalite blanks that you guys are buying, or even some of the resin blank, you know, other resin blanks like our epoxies, it's all the same process. So you're wanting to start out with your sanding grits, and then you just start working down into the higher grits until you get to a point where you can transition over to polishing pads or polishing paper, depending on what route you want to go, and then you just work through those grits as well, and then hit it with a uh, plastic polish that is for uh, plastics. You know, there are lots of things out there for like car finishes, like turtle wax and carnauba wax and all these different things out there, and those work great on cars, but when you're doing a plastic polish using something like the hot ultra gloss or um, something that's designed more for plastics or even for like a headlight repair something like that where it's actually polishing off very fine particles of abrasive inside a liquid is definitely the way to go in my opinion um, things like turtle wax carnauba wax those are polishing and buffing a little bit and then they're leaving a wax film on afterward that acts more like a finish than it does a polish and once that wax goes away you're left with kind of whatever uh, your sanding job was up until that point so if you only sand the 600 then you put on turtle wax that once that wax rubs off with your oils from your fingers you're left with just 600 grit foggy cloudy blanks and I've been there I've done that have a blackberry in my pocket this renaissance wax that i used to use exclusively on all of my stuff if you look at any of my older videos you'll see um i lived by this stuff it does that it it, it does have an abrasive in it that does put a really nice after polish on it but then it leaves a waxy coating on afterward that is fingerprint resistant but it doesn't last forever and so a couple years later all of a sudden your pen's starting to look a little foggy a little cloudy and a little tarnished and that's because this stuff is worn off and now you're exposing the resin underneath and it might not be as pretty as day one. Going with a CA finish on hybrids is the way to go um, because then you're putting on a clear coat of acrylic to the outside and then polishing, buffing that off. And I'll probably do another video on just how to do a CA finish and then polish with these uh, on another day. Um, and then this is the process that I use for all of my standard resin blanks. So thank you so much for joining me out in the woodshop. I know this was kind of a long-winded video. I wanted to give you as much in-depth look into how I do the polishing process, and I didn't want to fast-forward through it so you can see in real time how much I spend on a single tube before moving on to the next grit. So I hope this is helpful. If you guys like it, be sure to hit the like button down below. Be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me out here in the woodshop. This is Tactical Painter in the Suits Crafting Woodshop signing out. Take care and happy turning.